Hi, this is Noma Dimitri from the Alpine Garden and today, as you can see, we're going to talk about artichokes. Artichokes are a lovely and delicious vegetable uh, that, depending on where you are, can be more or less easy or difficult to grow. But first of all, let's look at the plant. Here's what it looks like. These are the artichokes that are just coming out now and you can see there are three prominent ones but I will show you later there are many more in the waiting and this is what the plant looks like. You can see the leaves, they are um, whitish gray and you can see all the plants behind me. These are separate artichoke plants right over here. Okay, uh, and we'll see the leaves. The leaves as you can see they're white gray uh, and they're very, very large compared to my hand. You can see it's many times the, the size of my hand. And the plant grows like this. Uh, there's a hairstyle that's called the artichoke hairstyle and it's called like that because it looks like an artichoke. So that's what the plant looks like. And all of a sudden from the middle of the plant you have this thick, thick stem and then the artichokes come out. <clears throat> So perhaps the first thing to understand when we're talking artichokes is which part of the plant is this? The part that we eat. What is this? Uh, and many of you will be surprised perhaps that it is the flower. So artichoke is a plant and a vegetable in which we actually eat the flower. Okay, so this is the flower. This flower, like all flowers, has its aim is not to be eaten, but to reproduce the plant. So this means that this particular flower, uh, it has to produce seeds. Otherwise, no seeds, no reproduction. So this means that the purpose of this flower is to open up, be fertilized by an insect or by the wind, and then make seeds which will fall to the ground and create new little artichokes. Um, so thinking of it this way, understanding that we're actually eating the flower, you can actually see that it is a flower. It looks like a rosebud, doesn't it? All the little tightly packed uh, petals all around and something that looks like it's begging to open this part here. Okay, so when this thing opens, there'll be um, the usual part flowers that will be probably purple in the case of the artichoke and uh, the seeds will be made, the, the, the flower will be fertilized, the seeds will be made, they will fall to the ground or whatever. So, this is a very important to understand all this so you can understand when we harvest, okay? The more, the later we harvest, the more this thing will open, the less it will look like the artichoke that you will eat and the less palatable it will be. This is exactly the right time to harvest these particular artichokes. You can see that the, the petals are just beginning to separate as the flower is getting ready to bloom. So this is the time to cut it. And what you do is you cut it right here, a couple of inches, a few centimeters below the base. Um, and then it's a very, very good idea if, you, if you're not going to boil it or cook it immediately, it's a very, very good idea to put it in lemon water because as you have seen from the artichokes that you buy on the store, they tend to discolor. So basically you plunge them in a pot full of water, cold water, and you, put ha you squeeze half a lemon in the water and then the thing will last nicely and fresh looking for much longer. It won't oxidize as quickly. So you can harvest them in the morning and eat them, as in my case, at night. Um, <clears throat> so those are the things that have to do with eating the artichoke plant. Now, the art how do you grow the artichoke plant, which is what the subject of this video is? Um, to grow the artichoke plant, it is we, we will go through some detail, but this detail is not only about artichokes, it's also about other vegetables you, that you may wish to grow. So if you understand how to grow this particular vegetable, you'll understand also how to grow tomato, eggplant and other uh, such vegetables. Now, what do these things have in common? Eggplant, tomato, artichokes. Which countries do you think when you first think of tomato, eggplant, zucchini and artichokes? In my mind, the countries that come to mind immediately are Italy and Greece, the Mediterranean. Okay, why? Why do these things grow in these countries? Because these countries have long hot summers uh, and that's what these plants want. So. The first takeaway is plants such as tomatoes, zucchinis, cucumbers, eggplants and artichokes. Uh, they like long, hot, dry summer with lots and lots of sun. 
okay? They don't necessarily like wet, foggy summers as you may with with cold and hot as you have in England and Ireland. Although with a special gardener you can grow them everywhere and there as well. Okay, so the art of growing vegetables for your dinner and for your for, for food is to be able to somehow create the conditions of the mother countries of these plants in your own garden if you don't have it. Now, in my garden here, we're in the Alps, so it's all mountains around here. We are 3,000 feet of altitude, 1,000 meters, and the conditions are not really the best for artichokes. So I have to do the tricks that I'm going to discuss to you that you will have to do too. Basically, you will have to do the same tricks that I have to do if you live somewhere where it snows in the winter. If you live somewhere where it snows in the winter, you have to learn how to treat these kind of vegetables um, the way I do so you can have them grow and you can eat this delicious thing. Okay, so there are two things to understand. First, there are vegetables that are, and plants in general, that are called perennials and there are some that are called annuals. Annuals means <clears throat> I grow from a seed this year, I push up, I make leaves, I make a flower, I make seeds, I die. You replant me from zero the year afterwards. That's an annual. A perennial means I do the same thing, I grow from a seed, I make leaves, da la 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 la, I make flowers, I make new seeds, but I don't die. I spend the winter sleeping and then next spring, boom, I'm out again and I keep on giving. Clearly, if we can have a perennial, it's much more fun because it's much more easy. You don't have to start from zero. Plus, with time, the plant gets bigger and, um, and therefore it's more productive, okay? So these artichokes, if they manage to spend the winter here up in the Alps with all the snow, then next year they will be larger and they will give more. So it's to my interest to make this happen. So how I'm gonna make it happen? All right, this is what we're gonna discuss right now. These are again my artichokes and this is the artichoke patch that you can see behind me. This is what they look from up above and these are the artichokes that are growing right now. So, what do I do? The first thing to understand is that if I leave this thing in the snow, unprotected, for the winter, they will die. This gives me two options. One option is to find a way to leave them in place, but protected from the snow. Um, if I can I succeed to do that, then in the spring, although they will die out and they will do, look like nothing during the winter, in the spring they will come up again and they will make new artichokes. How do I do that? <clears throat> in order to do that, I need to somehow insulate them from the frozen temperature so that the part of the plant that is under the ground, the part that you don't see, the root system, does not freeze. So that's the first thing that I need to do. Um, so how do I do that? The way to do it is like any insulation, the same way that you insulate the house. I need to put a lot of stuff on top of these guys so somehow the temperature, the warmish temperature of the earth, which is always warmer than the freezing winds that are going to blow here and cover the whole place with snow, uh, will somehow not get, that the, the root part will somehow not get as cold as the part on top of the earth. The way I will do that myself is I will pile here, as soon as fall temperatures start to drop, I will pile here a whole bunch of vegetable matter, like branches and leaves and all kinds of things that I can find and pile them up fairly high, make a huge pile here, so that this will insulate um, the roots of these poor little artichokes. You can also buy ki kind of artificial materials as well, plastic materials, things like blankets and whatever to use as well. But at the very end, the principle is always the same. You need a lot and lot of layers of insulating materials so they trap warmer air and the, and the huge cold winds that are passing through are not stripping the temperature out of the soil over there where the roots are. So the roots are preserved and these things survive. They make it through the winter. Okay. Second method. The second method is a little bit more of a pain, um, but more sure. What I do is I wait until these things, again, I'm, I wait until these things in late fall, that they lose their leaf, they go great, they look like hell, 
they're almost done, but the part underneath is still alive, the precious root. I dig them out, I put them in a pot, uh, and I put them in storage. I put them in storage somewhere in my basement or somewhere where the temperature is low enough that this thing will not believe that it's spring and start flowering and start making leaves again. So it has to be somewhere that it's kind of cool and in between temperature that the thing stays, stays dormant. Okay, so I dig them out, I put them in a pot with nice soil and then I put them in a dark cool place. Of course not cold enough like the outside so the thing will freeze but cool enough. And I make sure that it stays mildly moist. This is how you hibernate a plant that is a perennial. You do all this to make it feel like it's passing through a mild winter in Greece, let's say, or in Italy. That's basically what you're doing. You're giving it this kind of mild winter in your basement, the thing stays asleep, and then when spring comes, you bring it back right here, you dig your hole, you put it in, and then it thinks that it's spring in Italy and Greece, and it does its job. So these are the two methods in which you can maintain this plant as a perennial, okay? So, apart from that, the only thing you need to know, because otherwise this is a very easy plant to grow, the only thing you need to know is that the artichoke is a heavy feeder. A heavy feeder means it needs a lot of energy to produce these amazing parts that we eat and we like so much. So, um, the thing you, you do is you need to fertilize it a lot. I fertilize it with compost and manure. I have a neighbor that has sheep, he gives me the manure of the sheep, I mix it with compost and then I put it all around the plant uh, and in the hole where I planted it so that it grows. As long as you feed it well, you water it a bit, it doesn't need so much water. Remember, this is a native of Italy and Greece. Italy and Greece in the summer, not much rain. It's not the tropics. So uh, as long as you do that, you will have delicious artichokes. And, and next year, actually, you only see two here right now, but there'll be something like 10 per plant or more uh, coming out. So you just need a few plants and then you can feed artichokes to your whole family. This is Noma Dimitri from the Alpine Garden, all about artichokes. Please subscribe to my channel and share my videos if you like them. Thank you.